Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 70 of us, more or less, and as a result, we all get to do what we like, and I like doing elder law. Um, and I come here and do this show as uh, really as a supplement to the presentations I do at the, at the Tisbury um, Senior Center, which I've been doing for, I think, like 12 years now. So um, the purpose of this show is, as opposed to focusing on law issues, to focus on the people that you need to know and the programs you need to know about if you're a senior living here in um, Martha's Vineyard. And to talk with me today about an issue which is really crucial to seniors as well as to folks growing up who want to be working with seniors, my good friend Sandy Cordoby, whom you have seen before here, who's at uh, Geri uh, Horizons Geriatric, um, and Sam Hart, whom we have not had on before, uh, but who runs Ace MV, Correct. right? And we're going to talk quite a bit about that. But first, I'm just going to kind of preface this by going back to a number of conversations. It, ever since I've known Sandy, we've been we've, so we've been talking about this issue because you've always been dealing with a lot of seniors and you've always talked about the fact that there's this mismatch. You've got this growing population of seniors who, as they're getting older, may need care of some kind, right? And at, well, well, at the same time, you've got this, you've got this population of, of kids growing up, you know, coming, you know, li living here or coming, going through Martha's Vineyard High School saying, what am I going to do for a living, right? Because it, you know, you're not going to have high tech firms, I don't think, moving here, right? And you've so you've talked about that, right? And and so where is where is that, or where where it, does that problem continue to be a growing problem? I, I guess I am kind of like a broken record, aren't I? But this I will been, I will continue to bug everybody that I can think of until we solve the problem, and that is that we have far too wide of a gap between elders that need in home care. Um, and the people that are that are trained and able to provide that care. It is very concerning to me and to many people in elder care here on the vineyard that um, there is such a huge gap in that. And um, I do believe, as you say, I do believe that there are folks on the island, whether they're newly coming out of school or, and, and are gonna choose not to go to a college or, or a, a more, um, high tech, um, as you say, career path, or, um, or also what I find is there's some moms whose kids are just entering school now, yeah. and suddenly they at least have mom's hours available to yeah. help out and would love a career um, where they could be taking care of someone. So I think that the population is there to be trained. Um, we just have to kind of get our act together better and how to get them trained. And figure out that that's really a, a, like a valid a viable career path. Absolutely. Figure it, out how to get them paid properly. And figure yeah. out how to get them paid, but also yeah. really figure out how to get them trained and kind of interested in this and kind of related yes. fields. Yes, yes, excellent. And Absolutely. in the course, and, and I know that you've actually done some training yourself, I have, right? So I have. I taught a CNA class and. Um, CNA and means? Certified nursing assistant. So I did yeah. teach a uh, certified nursing uh, assistant class as well as um, a home health aid certified class. And people need to have a CNA, they need to have those letters in order to do what? That's an important point, is a certified nursing aid license needs to be, you need to have that training and be certified um, if you want to work in a Medicare certified facility. So here, that would be Windermere mm -hmm. or Martha's Vineyard Hospital. Mm -hmm. Or you need a certified home health aid certificate um, if you want to work in any of the nursing, um, the home care, um, the home care agencies here yeah. on the vineyard, um, as well as the private assisted living, the Henrietta Borough House and the um, Long Hill in Edgartown. Mm -hmm. So you need a home health aid certificate for that. And they're separate certificates. They're separate certificates. The the piece does that's one, different. Does one, excuse me, does one often follow the other? Do you do one and then do the other? Or do people do it? We love it when they do them both, but yeah. um, but the piece that's different, they're both about 100 hour courses. Yeah. Um, the piece that's different is the certified nursing assistant, you have to do 26 hours of clinical um, in a Medicare certified facility, such as Windermere or the hospital. I see, I see. So Sam, um, 
we were talking before the program, you said, well, this is a great opportunity to talk about a whole variety of things having to do um, um, with ASMV. But can you, so, but could you do that? Could you just give us a sense of, for folks who don't know, you know, or don't have a real sense of it, what ASMV is, right? Um, and the kinds of varieties of, of folks that are trained through ASMV, and then kind of talk about your, your sense of right now, those programs within, HM, within ASMV that really kind of support these things, and how you would expect those to grow or change over time. Is that a fair way to? Absolutely. Right, that'll, that's it. You do that in less than 20 minutes and you're a winner. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Arthur, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm the executive director of ASMV, the Adult Community Education at Martha's Vineyard. And when I, I took over about three years ago from Lynn Ditchfield, who started ASMV in 2008, um, and she had the vision of taking an adult education program and really infusing it with college credit and uh, licensure oh. opportunities for adults um, in the community. So before it had more kind of been more kind of a general adult education? That's right. Yeah, they'd yeah. been night classes typically at the high school, uh, cooking classes. I think they did fencing. They did all sort of, uh, sort of enrichment uh, non-credit courses for interested adult learners. Yeah. Um, That's a good distinction. Enri I like that. Enrichment versus uh, credit type, right? Right, exactly. So um, not many people like that, that word enrichment. Lifelong learning courses. Lifelong learning. Um, and so on a limit, an island like this where we have limited access to, to post-secondary education, um, Lynn had, Lynn Ditchfield, the former, the founder, had this, I this idea in mind that uh, adult education on the island should be different. It should be, it should encompass continuing education as well, yeah. access to college, um, access to professional licensure programs. So when I, uh, I guess, took over for her in 2000, uh, 2000 about three years ago. Yeah. Um, Oh, and by the way, I should ask. So once again, so I'm a I'm a off I'm a wash ashore. Uh -huh. So what are you are, are you originally from here? Did yes, you, I'm yes. I was born and raised in Shomark. Oh, so you're a genuine a, a, a local. I'm a you're a local. Yeah, That's, great. That's great. That's great. That's <laughs> great. I came back about I don't know six years ago, and I've been working at Ace for three years. So that's great. Um, that's great. So I didn't mean to interrupt. So yeah, no, no. It's it's been great to be back, and it's a wonderful job to have uh, you know to contribute to the community. But um, so we um, created a new strategic plan about a year and a half ago uh, yeah. that really oriented um, our programming for the next three to five years on um, workforce training and on college credit. And so we identified four tracks. We identified education as one of the tracks, mm -hmm. uh, business and computer technologies, um, technical training, which is, encompasses uh, contractors, landscapers uh, who need certification who, it's like li with licensure requirements that's yeah. right and yeah. then the final being healthcare or health sciences um, and so those are the four tracks that we're focusing on um, and and just uh, f today yes how many people are in these various tracks how many how many students are you dealing with um, we in these well we I would say in these particular tracks about two to three hundred a year um, a are lot in these of tracks. people. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot yeah. of people. Uh, we get a lot in our business uh, in computer technology yeah. uh, and also our technical yeah. training. Uh, we had 20, we had, excuse me, we had 19 um, teachers graduate through our MED program through Fitchburg State University in December, December 22nd. Um, in our all, in our all of, excuse uh, me, in our yes. all of the classes in conjunction with Fitchburg State, so that's the yeah. So the, we have the link. We use yeah. uh, we have uh, adjunct professors here on the island that we yeah. identify, we we source from the community, and we get them vetted through Fitchburg State University. They become adjunct professors, and they can teach classes here on the island. Uh, and then the other classes are going to be online. So it's a hybrid model. It's fifty percent online, fifty percent on the island. Um, and we graduated nineteen. 17 of those are teachers on the island who need this um, uh, master's um, uh, degree to get their professional license and continue right. teaching in the island. Because you need it five years after you get, That's you get right. a license. That's right. So yeah. if you look at the, you know, how a teacher, uh, what a te all the steps a teacher needs to go through, it's a lot. And um, bringing a program like this to the island um, can mean the world because they don't have to, they don't have to leave the island. They, people have families, they have other uh, obligations. So having the classes here is really what our focus has been. Um, and then, so to build off of that, uh, we've, we've brought in some undergraduate credit in health sciences in partnership with the Martha's Vineyard Hospital as part of our healthcare track. So talk about that now. Talk about the healthcare track and, and, and how it's developed in general and then 
how it relates to some of these sure. issues, these kind of demand issues. How are you going to fix my problems? Yeah. <laughs> how are you fixing Sandy's problem? Well, slowly. Uh, so that she doesn't okay. keep yeah. telling me, oh, we got this problem, you know. Well, first we, I, we should, like I should uh, just mention how great it is to be here with Sandy, because Sandy's been a, uh, an advisor to this effort for um, at least a, a couple of years now, um, as ASMV tries to put together what, it, what this program is going to look like yeah. and what kind of classes we're going to offer. So it's been great to have Sandy's guidance uh, so. along the way. Um, and so um, we, to answer your question about how we would build this, is we work very closely with the school system. Mm -hmm. um, the high school now has, a, um, as part of their Voc Tech program, they have a health assisting program for, for uh, high schoolers. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to graduate uh, 10 students a year um, and have them sit for their CNA uh, exam. Oh. And they become CNAs right out of high school. And then they could take that certificate with them and they could continue on uh, with uh, undergraduate credit to get their nursing degree yeah. or go and becoming a medical assistant. Uh, you know, any, uh, there are multiple tracks they can go in. And so the, uh, um, the, the strategy with ACE is to, to maintain this wonderful relationship we have with the school system yeah. uh, and to be, um, to work with them to provide the other sort of post-secondary classes that a student would need um, uh, to take in order to become a medical assistant or to become a, um, a, a um, you know, um, an RN. Um, and so uh, in order to do that, we, we've reached out to the hospital, the Martha's Vineyard Hospital uh, last year. Um, we have an agreement with them to offer undergraduate credit in the hospital which has been uh, a huge uh, help. Um, and, w and for what courses would you need? I know Sandy was just talking about this, the CNA requirement. For what courses would you need to be actually doing stuff at the, <clears throat> at the hospital? So right now, uh, we're taking it slow. We're offering medical terminology and pharmacology courses. Mm -hmm. And we're offering them as professional development to the staff at the hospital. I see. And we invite other healthcare workers in the community to come and take the class as well. Uh, but what we're really trying to do is identify a cohort. We try and use a cohort model where we identify a group of students to build the program around so we can get them from point A all the way to the end of a program and not just give them a couple credits here and then send them on their way. So yeah. that's the model we're trying to build. We're trying to work with the high school because we think they can be a feeder um, to get young, young people in uh, who are interested in health sciences, interested in health care, uh, to want to take these post-secondary courses. Um, and there's always, you know, there's always uh, um, difficulties, challenges with that. There's clinical work that needs to be done uh, at f facilities. So we, we know that we're limited in what kind of credit we can offer, but we think that we could be able to offer 60 to 75 percent of a program on the island or, or very close to the island, either in Woods Hole or in Falmouth. So that's what we're working for, working toward. I see. And, and, and how do you kind of how do you see that evolving, right? So, so right now you have courses that are being offered. And by the way, does the coursework, does the classroom work actually happen at the hospital? Mm -hmm. or does it, yeah, so that happens as well as the clinical stuff. So you can really do everything at the hospital. Yeah, so far we don't run courses that require clinical work. We don't have those yet. We're, we're doing sort of we're baby steps. <laughs> yep. uh, we do the classroom. Uh, we think medical terminology and pharmacology are classes that are uh, applicable to a whole range of um, pathways in healthcare. So those are kind of the low hanging fruits that we can just grab. Uh, we know we can grab those two classes and offer them because they will benefit um, a broad range of professionals in the healthcare field. Um, but we, um, we feel that within the next couple of years, as we build this cohort, then we'll look to doing more clinical work. We could approach um, you know, the hospital here, there's you know, the uh, Falmouth Hospital, there's, there, are, there are facilities around or on the island that we yeah. could approach um, when we need to offer those classes. But um, the people that I've spoken to also are, they need to get this part done first anyway. Mm -hmm. So it feels like it's going to dovetail really well from getting some of the beginning stuff done until they're ready for some of the actual clinical. I think it's going to work out beautifully. Mm -hmm. It's going to dovetail nicely right into that. And Sandy, from your, from your perspective, Kind of what on the on the other end when folks are when folks are done with this stuff what kind of what's the what's the demand what kinds of people are you looking for, and 
once again, you, 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 and your, you and your partner, Beth, are, are the geriatric care managers here in the island. So you'd have, you, you actually have the ability to have a kind of a global sense of what the, what the totality of demand would be, right? Yeah, it did, is. Did, we have did, about 100, 100 to 110 families that we're helping on the vineyard now, and, and we also are, are growing. The business on the Cape is growing as well. And, and it always comes down to that same issue, is, is we have people that really need 8 to 10 hours of care at home, um, and, and the availability of the caregiver is just not there. And, and for, the fam for the daughters and sons and family members that are still working and, and have mom living at home with them or dad, um, or a husband or wife, and then their ability to maintain the house financially is really limited because they need to go to work, but they need somebody to stay home with their elder as well. All right. of the agencies on the island are desperate for this help. For this kind um, of help. So it isn't, Horizons actually does not employ um, these caregivers. Um, but we are dependent on the agencies to have the, the human resources staff right. to provide what we need. Um, and I know you and I have been in this position where we've actually had, where I've had clients here whom we've qualified for, for government benefit programs, correct. right? To provide hours of home care at home, only to find out there are no, home, there are no caregivers Absolutely. to actually right. provide those hours, it's a, it's a, which is a, a scary thing. It, it, it's very frustrating, right? That's why we're so thrilled for programs like ASMV to be looking at this and, and helping us recognize where the problem is. And at least we feel like we're not in the deep end of the pool by ourselves any longer, and is that we have partners within the community that are, that are, are definitely hearing us and, and trying hard to help. And that's really exciting. And the, and the notion of having, of having, so you feel that, that even for things that you don't have, I know one of the, one of the issues here is you, you, you have Windermere, you ha, you have, and you have the, the, the Henrietta Brewer House in Long Hill, but, and, and then you have the hospital, but there aren't other, but to have other facilities like that in Falmouth also, mm -hmm. to be able to allow you to grow more clinical training, mm -hmm. sounds like just a, a crucial piece of all yeah. of this. Anytime you do any of these type of workforce trainings or these types of uh, programs, you have yeah. to get creative <laughs> on the island. And I think that as we travel down this road, we're going to have to get creative at some point. But I do, I do think the resources are there, um, whether in Woods Hole or in Falmouth or on the Cape. Uh, Cape Cod Community College has been very um, still present here on the island. So um, we have a lot of actors in the community, and I think that um, with the partnership with the hospital, with what the, the direction the high school is going in, um, uh, I think it's there's a the winds are blowing favorably. And, and can you so. just give me a sense from from your perspective, how is Fitchburg State looking at this? When I think it to mm -hmm. myself, it's Fitchburg State. That's a long ways away. That's right. right. Yeah. And so, how are they feeling about the relationship that they've been that they've developed here? That's an excellent question. They they have. Um, I mean, I, other than the fact that everybody wants to come because it's right. Martha's Vineyard. So well, like, wow, have, compared to Fitchburg, sure, I'll go to Martha's <laughs> Vineyard. Right. We're an extended campus partner of Fitchburg yeah. State University, and they have about a dozen across the, the Commonwealth. And we Extended are Extended campus partners. Yes, yeah, so they yeah. work with agencies and other organizations throughout the Commonwealth. And we're way down, you know, on Martha's Vineyard. So when you look at the, the map of Fitchburg State and you look at all of the other, they're all basically around Boston. Yeah, and th this is and like, then, sounds like Hawaii. Yeah, and, and then, then they've the got Southern us. State. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and so over there. And you know. um, but they uh, it's been a very fruitful partnership. Uh, they're a, a, a very, very uh, flexible, responsive and supporting, supportive um, uh, partner. Uh, they've been great, and uh, they're the dean of health sciences and their um, dean of nursing came down um, last fall and got a tour of the hospital. Uh, the head of nursing, Carol Bardwell, uh, yep. took us on a tour. Um, so you know they've been uh, they were far away, uh, but uh, they they enjoy coming down, and we've had a very very successful relationship with them so far. So that's, that's great. Yeah. So you really feel like in terms of the directions you're taking this program, you could. You feel that you're going to have this kind of continuing support. Yeah, and they encourage us to reach out to other uh, higher education partners if we if, if there's a better fit. I mean, right. it's not like there's a, uh, you know, they're they're very responsive and understanding of, of our needs, and they have a, a very very broad array of classes, online classes, which are also very helpful. Um, I mean, you can do the second half if you want to get a. a a BSN now you can this a PSN a, a BSN a BSN yeah bachelor, bachelor of science, bachelor of science yeah. in nursing if you want to get the second half of that is all online now yeah. you, you don't yeah. even need to take <laughs> so um, so they they have those types of of, uh, of pro programs which are 
very useful that, when you're living on an island, especially. This is just terrific. So, so once again, I only heard about Sam through Sandy. So thank you for in, for introducing us, and thank you very much for coming on. I think it's really important for folks here to realize for seniors to realize that there is something being done about trying to deal with this issue and for younger people we have a few younger people mm -hmm. who watch the show to realize that you know there there is a real evolving track that can that can give you a career mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to you know live here and support yourself and and while at the same time really helping a lot of the people some of the people that you grew up with mm -hmm. or the mothers of the people that you grew up with so it's really wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. Arthur, thank thank you. you always for being <laughs> over. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next installment of uh, Bridge Run Briefs. Thank you.